another video brought to you by Kendall Works. All right, so today I'm going to attempt to fix my NAS. It's made by Thekis and it's called uh, the N4100 Pro model. Uh, this NAS has four drives. You can pull them in and out. They are not hot swappable, um, but it does post up the four drives and the enclosure. And to buy a new one, you know, you're looking at four, five, six hundred dollars for one of these. So I really don't want to have to buy another one if I don't need to. So basically I moved the device, I plugged it back in, and it's giving me an error message on power up. It's never done this before. The device, I've had this for gosh, three, four years now at least, and um, just never had to hiccup with it. So um, I'll power up the device and I'll show you what's happening here. All right, and you can hear it beep. That means that the power on self test is working. But as you can tell on the LCD display, it says up VER colon 004, and it just says booting, and it just sits there forever. And um, it doesn't do anything. I can't get into it remotely, et cetera, et cetera. So the first step that you're going to need to do is you're going to need to get an OS on a USB thumb drive. And in order to do that, I use the program called Rufus. You can download it online. And uh, once you have that downloaded, the next step is you're going to want to download a program called Slacks. This Slacks is a Linux live distribution. It runs off of USB thumb drives. Um, it'll run off a CD, but for this purpose, we're going to use it to run off a USB thumb drive. All right, so once you've downloaded those two, go to your download folder. All right, once you're under your downloads folder, you should have the Slacks, you should have this Rufus. This file here is actually the um, firmware version or the you know software that the manufacturer provides, and that can be downloaded from www. .the the cuss or thecus thcus com forward slash downloads forward slash dom and make sure the dom is capitalized all right once you have those files the two we're really concerned with is rufus and slacks so what you're going to want to do is launch rufus and before you do that um, make sure you have a thumb drive all right put that thumb drive in your computer and then once that thumb drive is in your computer, you can go ahead and launch the Rufus utility and then click the CD-ROM down here on the bottom right and then select the slacks, go ahead and click open and go ahead and click start. All right, it's going to warn you that all the data is going to be deleted. Just go ahead and click OK. All right, it's going to copy all the files. After it's done copying the files, it this basically makes your USB drive bootable. All right, but there's one last process you're gonna need to take. After you've created that bootable drive, you're gonna have to come under this, the USB device, the slacks folder, the boot folder, and double click on this boot install.bat. All right, it's gonna run and it's gonna set up a boot record for whatever drive letter yours is. In this case, mine's H. You can just close that. And then what you're going to want to do next is you're going to power down your PC. And once you've powered down your PC, you're going to go into your BIOS and you're going to make sure the USB device is the first thing that you boot from. And then go ahead and power on your computer and it should boot into the Slack's operating system. All right, the next step is once you get into the Slack's operating system is you're going to open a program called Terminal. Once you open Terminal, that should be on the bottom left hand side. All right, once you open terminal, you're going to want to type in a, a command to change to your SSHD file. That file is the one we're basically wanting to enable so that you can SSH into the drive remotely because we don't have a VGA cable or any way to get in. You know, we can't plug a monitor into this network attached device right here. So once, it, once you have terminal, you're going to want to and type in SU for a super user, which is basically you know an admin on a Linux box. And then after you do that, it's going to ask you for a password. The password is T-O-O-R. All right. And then after you do that, you're going to want to type in C-H-M-O-D-755. This is basically setting file permissions that you can execute this file. And then it's going to be under etsy, init.d, SSHD. 
All right, if that command does not work, you may have to browse out to it. And you know, you can do that by CD, which changes directory at C and then init.d, and then you can do a ls, and that will show you, and you're looking for that sshd file, all right? If that's not in that directory, where you're going to want to change is to cd etc um, rc.d, and then do an ls again, and then look for that sshd, all right? If it lives in that etc rc.d instead of the init.d, you're going to want to head and go ahead and issue this same command, chmod 755, but just change the path to reflect that where it lives. All right, and that's all you have to do. Once you've done that, you can then, from that same uh, terminal window, you can issue power off. All right, that will power off the basically that live Linux version that you're running from your floppy, or sorry, from your USB drive. All right. And then once you're done, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to uh, come over to this device here and you're going to want to put that USB in and then we're going to power it up. All right, so let's uh, we'll kill this or try to. All right, there it goes. All right, All right put that USB drive in. I got it before it beeped. I'm not going to save that. So it beeped, it posted. I'm looking at the USB thumb drive on the back. And here I'll spin this around so you guys can see it. I don't know if you'll be able to see it here, but it is. It's blinking. So it is reading it. All right, and I made sure I plugged in my network cable to the first port here, not the second one. All right, so the front of the screen, we'll look at that. All right, it's still doing the same thing, up version 004 booting. But I'm not concerned about that really right now because the USB drive is flashing in the back, so it's reading it, you know? So that tells me it's trying to load that operating system that we put on there. So the next step is you're gonna wanna log into your router because this is uh, the IP address that that box is getting is getting it via DHCP. All right, so we're gonna want to come down to this attached devices. And if you don't know what your device is called, I'd highly suggest naming your USB drive. Um, I did that off camera earlier. I called it disaster. So one of these device names here in your router should be called disaster or whatever you call it. You know, and if you just go with the regular one, it should be called slacks. All right, but it's not finding it yet, but it's still reading it from the back there. And um, I did this off camera and it did pick up an IP address earlier, so I'm just gonna try and ping that same address and hopefully it finds it. Oh, there we go, look at that. So I'm able to ping the device. I'm guessing that's the same device. Let's refresh here. There it is, there's disaster. So it sees it, so that's, that's a good starting point. So now what we wanna do is just, you know, we can verify we can ping it so we can get to that that NAS. All right, the next thing we're gonna wanna do is actually connect to it. So the next tool you're gonna need is a tool called Putty. And you can download this online. And then you're gonna wanna put in your IP address of 192.168, mine happens to be 1.63, all right? So that's what I'm going with. Click open, you should get a window like this. It's gonna ask you to log in. The default username is root, the default password is T-O-O-R. All right, look at that, we're there. Okay, and we're in, we're able to do stuff. So the next step that you wanna do is now that you are actually on the device here, is this is that DOM file I was talking about earlier, the firmware. What you're gonna to wanna to do is download that. In order to download it, what you're gonna to wanna to do is find your version. Like I said, I'm gonna use this 5200, and I have a 20, 128 meg stick in mine, and I'm pretty sure that's pretty standard. So you can right click on it, copy the link location, come back to this putty window, and type in wget, that basically is a Linux version of uh, a downloadable uh, command. And you're gonna put in that source file because we want that file. You're gonna click enter. All right, so it's now going out to Thikus's website and it's downloading that firmware version. You know, off the other thing I forgot to mention is there's a DOM 
uh, memory module that sits on the side. All right, this is 128 megs. Uh, DOM, basically, uh, it, it's basically like a flash drive. Think of it like that. But it uses an IDE cable connector. All right, that's what this little thing is here. These are the IDE cable connectors. There we go. All right, and that just sits inside the case here on the side. And you can just simply pull it out by pulling this case off. In order to pull the case off, it's pretty simple. There's a couple of three thumb screws in the back. Let's see if I can get this on camera. There's one here, there's one up here, and there's one over here. All right, you just simply loosen these, take the whole case and move it forward. So you would slide it forward like this and lift up. All right, the whole thing comes out. Um, with the USB thumb drive, yeah, I can still do it. So let me show you that. I was worried there might be something in the way with the thumb drive back there. I don't really want to screw it up here. All right, so they're loose. So you just pull on the case forward. I'll move it around so you guys can see what I'm doing here. All right, so... Sorry, trying to get it in view. So you're going to slide it forward, like I said, and just kind of lift up. Don't do this while it's running. <laughs> do this before you initiate this whole process. All right, down here, it's hard to see, but let me grab the camera. There's that connector. All right, that's where this little chip connects into. All right, and it has a black side. And the chip faces up. So if you're looking at the board, the chip should go in like this and connect into there. All right, I'm not going to do that right now because it's not ideal. You really don't want to plug it in while it's powered on. We may not have an option. But yeah, basically, you know, this is the board. This is the top of it, obviously. And here's the bottom. It plugs just right down in here. This is the flash memory. So this file that we're seeing that's downloading on the screen here is what we're going to try and do is take that file and we're going to stick this little card back in and then we're going to copy that file onto this drive all right i haven't done that yet i don't know if that's going to work or not but um, basically what i wanted to show you in this first video is how to get uh, linux installed on this machine so at least you can do something with it and then from there, hopefully you can fix that flash drive that's bad because at this point we know the motherboard's good, everything's working physically on the device, you know, because we put a operating system on that flash drive. In theory, you could just run this off of this flash drive. I mean, you could use this Slax version and you could install software on it and it would run just fine. I mean, you could do that. I don't know how fast it would be, um, but that is definitely an option. You know, this, this device does have a black back plane um, back here all these hard drives slide into and I don't know if you could make that work without any proprietary software you know much like the firmware that's running on it now so um, I don't know that and I don't want to take the chance of just messing around with Linux here I'd really like to get the device back to where it was as you can tell it's still blinking that blue light it was blinking with before the LCD screen um, even though we're able to get to it it hasn't changed it looks identical I'm not worried about that right now because it probably determines uh, what this displays on the front based off of that firmware that was loaded. You know, this software that's right now is just a live version of Linux and it doesn't have any way to know what to input to this screen is my guess. Um, so that's the next step I'm going to take is let this finish downloading and then I'll create a second video and I'll try and get the software copied over. Uh, appreciate you guys for watching. I hope you guys learned something.